Hi guys, it's Samuel Larson here and on this video we are going to tackle a very common problem of not knowing your users and uh, we are going to do this on a very practical manner. So, of course the theory goes that you want to market to your ideal customers but uh, the problem oftentimes is that we don't really know them. So, I'm going to show you a great way that uh, you can do and uh, explore your ideal customers with. Now, you will need a couple things here. So, of course, you need data because uh, it is actual history-based thing. So, we need a Google Analytics account that is set up, contains data, and uh, ideally, we also want to have a multi-step funnel. So, this is not a great way for single landing pages, long form landing pages. But what I'm personally curious about, and I think you should be as well, is the practical uses of Google Analytics and how we can use those to draw quick insights and uh, deeper understanding on our customers and uh, get uh, insights from that that can really help us with our business goals. So. Let me show you a very practical way to look at the buyer's journey. And I am going to do it step by step. All right, so now we are here in Google Analytics, as you can see. And uh, by default, Google Analytics will give you the last traffic source that led to that conversion, which is um, something you might look at like, okay, our best customers are coming from display ads or something like that. But that is really only half the truth because uh, there's a lot more that goes to a single conversion. Most of the times they are seeing multiple ads and so on, at least if you are all over the internet, like you should be with retargeting ads, etc., etc. So that can be a little bit complicated, but um, I'm going to show you more of a beginner way and uh, an easy way to understand how the channels are working together and how your customers are actually purchasing. And we are going to focus on your best customers because that's what we really want to focus our efforts on anyway. So here we have uh, our uh, Google Analytics and what we want to focus on is the audience and go to user explorer section. And uh, you want to be able to see your best customers here and analyze them individually. This will tell you exactly where they're coming from, how many touch points do you need for them to convert. And uh, you can get more of a thorough idea of uh, how they are buying, what's their experience. Are they going uh, through multiple uh, visits when they're buying and so on. Okay. Now, I got to warn you, this is a little bit tedious since you are analyzing individual users, but it can be very well worth it. All right, so let's drill into the data because data is where all the wisdom is. And here we have our user explorer. And ideally, like uh, in the beginning, you will not have any filters. So let me actually remove this filter here. All right, we have our 100% users. Now I'm going to add a segment here and we want to really focus on those that made a purchase because uh, our customers are buyers, not uh, viewers. All right, so here we can see we have um, the timeline. So we're looking at the beginning of 2017 and uh, we are uh, going to sort this by transaction. So we want to find the people that are buying the most and then find out more about those people. So here we can see some good people that uh, like to buy from our e-commerce store. It doesn't really matter whether you use transaction or revenue for ranking, but uh, ideally you want to kind of like look at both. And here we can see the client IDs. These are the Google Analytics user IDs. 
And now you could pretty much find out this anyway, uh, who they are. So they're supposed to be a bit secret, but uh, if you follow the behavior, you can pretty much identify who those people are. And that's why we have uh, the cookie policies uh, in Europe right now, uh, because uh, this stuff, as I'm about to show you, is uh, very much like spying, you could say, some might even call it unethical, but we're just using it for marketing purposes and uh, with good intentions. So let's dive deeper into this. All right, so I'm going to choose this user because uh, he bought the most over 32 transactions. And uh, let's see what this gives us. All right, this particular user, he was acquired as a customer on November the 17th. Now this I'm looking at uh, 2017 here, but uh, he's a long-term fan of our store. So that's uh, all good. And he's using a desktop computer, which is ideal for buying. Okay, and uh, he's already spent $4,000 over a few sessions here. So let's look deeper into these sessions and uh, how we can use those. Now I'm going to leave these four things here. So basically you can see page views, goals, e-commerce related things and events. And uh, they will all make sense very shortly as I will click here and expand all. So we can see the March 9th, which is uh, his latest purchase of uh, $99. And let's see how that happened. Now, we need to scroll down to find the beginning of the session, but we can already see that it's a quite a long one. So 9.47 to actual 12.07. So that's, uh, that's from the beginning to end. But notice that it is actually broken down to different parts. So he left and he came back. And uh, that is our first learning here. But um, let's see. Okay, this person with this session today, he came from direct and he's using a desktop. And initially, he only spent very little time on our website. Notice that uh, he started from the billing address page. So he's probably looking at uh, yesterday's transaction here and making sure his billing address is right. Then he started uh, looking his order in detail and left. All right, one and a half hours later, he comes back and uh, same page, actually billing address. But uh, this is a very common behavior in e-commerce that uh, then they start looking for more, they get uh, more hungry and uh, he started looking for men's outerwear. So we probably know he's a man or at least shopping for men. And we could validate that from our back end data, but uh, not, let's not do that right now. Anyway, we can see that he's looking at different uh, items here. And this is where the page view, the e-commerce, and the events come to play. So page view is viewing. So let's say he views a product, whereas uh, e-commerce is actually something that uh, he did that was related to actual e-commerce functionality. So this is him clicking on this product page and also those uh, e-commerce tracking things will be there when he's adding things to basket. So here we can see this is an e-commerce conversion goal and it is worth something. Add to basket is worth something. We could assign a monetary value to that as well. All right, he viewed shopping cart a couple of times, viewed checkout information. So maybe that is of importance to him. Then notice he entered checkout, but he entered checkout for zero USD. 
So that wasn't actually a converting checkout, but it is still a goal of ours and it is marked as a goal conversion, so to say. But it is not a conversion yet since he didn't buy. And what actually ended up happening is that uh, he went back and forth. So checked out this uh, viewed payment methods, checked it out again, then uh, reviewed the order. And this is also very common. So you can see like customers hesitating, like you to think it over. And uh, eventually we can see that uh, he actually completed the goal, which is purchase completed. So went back and forth a little bit and then purchased this. And we can see from the pages that uh, they are looking for, what are their most common concerns, objections here at the checkout. So they're going back for some kind of information. And uh, if this is happening a lot, they're going back and then they're completing the checkout. Then we know that we are actually providing the information that they need. All right, so he's viewing the checkout confirmation and uh, then he's back to the home page. Starts uh, the checkout apparel again, this time uh, uh, women's apparel and finds a jacket. All right, so we can see how he is proceeding. He completed the event add to cart for this micro fleece jacket. So he's probably still interested in shopping for more. And we can see that he's viewing the payment method and actually doing a very similar process to before. And here we go, another payment for product revenue $60 and shipping cost 65. So yeah, sorry, 650. So here we go. This is how you can uh, drill into some of the best users. And here we can see $100 was spent on this visit. And uh, we had 13 e-commerce events, uh, five events uh, that were not e-commerce related, so to say, three call completions and 24 page views. Okay, so we can uh, see these uh, individually too. So uh, you can do all kind of filtering and play around with that. Now, this method is great for identifying segments that uh, you can use to filter customers with. So really segments are what separates beginners and intermediate Google Analytics users from the advanced ones. The advanced ones know how to drill into and uh, understand customers deeper by creating different segments. And then uh, you can get quite complicated with that. But uh, complicated also means in depth in Google Analytics. So you want to be able to create different segments and understand your customers as good as you can. And then uh, you can then apply your marketing and make it that much more efficient because you will be targeting those people according to behavior that are the best buyers. All right. So I hope this was really helpful to you and make sure to kind of like check out your users now and what they're doing every once in a while to get some good ideas on how you could improve your site. All right, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. I will have a lot of Google Analytics content coming up. All right, see you on the next one. Thanks.